What's up, Broadway fans? It's Monday, March 5th, and we are live at 5. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined by content producer Matt Roden. Hi, everybody. Oh, double piece over there. <laughs> you know. And, uh, oh, we have a great guest today. Rob Evan is here from... Rocktopia. 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 We love that title. I love saying that. Yeah, we're going to find out all about... You know Rob. Rob has... We, we've seen Rob we in a lot Rob of shows. Evan. Yeah. But now he made a show. Yeah. And, he, and it's coming to Broadway, and it sounds like... Awesome. There's a lot yeah, to, to chew to on there. Yeah, good I stuff. I can't wait to hear all about where this came from. But first, today's top five. So the Oscars were last night, uh, and there were a plethora of theater people that were uh, featured and awarded, all the things. Right, of course. Did you watch the Oscars? I watched it. I st they're too long. They were late. They every late every last year, night. everybody says this, but I'm like, they have. I, I, I went to bed early, and then I got up. Okay, let me box. just say. First of all, congratulations, congratulations to the Lopez's. Yes. Frozen. Uh, it's coming. Do you to say Broadway the Lopez's if it's Kristen Anderson Lopez? They, to Kristen Anderson Lopez they and adorable daughters Robert Lopez and yes. their two kids. Uh, they won their second Oscar for "Remember Me" from the movie Coco. Coco. I said it like that. Coco. 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 <laughs> um, beating out fellow Broadway people, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. Um, but there's more. There's more than the, just that. Also, I've been told that uh, Bobby Lopez is a double EGOT. Yes, double EGOT. He's a double EGOT. So he um, has two E's, two G's, two O's, two T's. Thanks for That's breaking amazing. that down for us, Paul. And he's that the first good. person ever. The first person ever. Well, I want to be clear about ever. what double EGOT means. He's got, but well, you just said the letters, but sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Tony winner Frances McDormand won for, let me right, look at this, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, or Missouri, depending on where you're from. And Sam Rockwell also won for that movie. He worked with Martin McDonough, who wrote and directed that movie. In what, mo in what Broadway play, Paul Wintorek? I'll be handing in Spokane. You're welcome. Uh, I'm just distracted by the fact that Frances McDormand wore an actual outfit to the Oscars, unlike Don't the Tony Awards. Don't mess with Frances when she won McDormand. The Tony, she wore a denim jacket and like an Old Navy summer dress. She's all about the work, Paul. But we love her. She's yeah. very talented. But she looked gorgeous last night. Yeah. And, and she made all the women stand, and it was it was a whole yes. moment. It was, yes. it was fantastic. And Kayala Settle performed. Kayala, yes. Kayala. Uh, uh, yeah. She's saying, right. "This is me." Uh, she rocked the house. It was fantastic. It was yeah. a tight. I mean, I, I didn't know who was going to win that category. That was That's which true. Broadway favorites will win, <laughs> or Mary, Mary, maybe Mary J. Blige would have won. <laughs> but the other thing I want to say is there's a great selfie out there. That's right. Of Lin Manuel Miranda, who is a um, a presenter, mm -hmm. a, and and the Lopez's and a former uh, nominee. Yeah. Yeah, and Pasek and Paul, all the Broadway people. It was fun. Yeah. But I'm telling. I'm sorry. There's too many technical awards on the Oscars. No one needs to know about this sound mixing. This is why mixing. I go to sleep early. And people, just, that should yeah. be on the night before when they do their technical. Don't knock Kyle's the technical people. Kyle's shaking his head because he's a filmmaker. <laughs> but I'm sorry. This is what it is. We this have, is this is me. We do have four more news stories. Today. I know. All right. Going. So getting yeah. So getting back to just Broadway. So. Uh, the Ferryman, uh, Jess Butterworth's play, got a theater and has new, now has dates. I'm so excited. Go on. Did you see it? No, but I'm so excited to so see it. So the Ferryman was off Broadway. The Ferryman was in London. It hasn't been here. Oh, it hasn't been off Broadway yet. I'm sorry. Um, what am I mixing it up with? Anyway, it's coming to Broadway in the fall. <laughs> it's, it's Jess Butterworth's new show. It is about a family, and then a guy shows up. It's about Northern Ireland. People, go, people go missing. That's right. That's right. Yes. It's supposed, it won like every award in London. That's it's supposed right. to be fantastic. Sam Mendes is directing. Um, it, it played the Royal Court in London, and it's going to open at the Jacobs Theatre. Previews start October 2nd, opening October 21st. And no casting yet, but I'm sure. I'm some. sure it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, Paper Mill announced their entire next season, which is very exciting. There's a nice uh, mix in here. All right, I'm going to take a deep breath because this is a lot. Are you ready? Paper Mill's like the pre-Broadway house now. It is, right? Mm -hmm. Milburn, New Jersey. Who knew? All right, well, they had already talked about Unmasked. This is the Andrew Lloyd Webber review that has his songs and also has some stories of how those songs were created. That will run from September 27th through October 28th. Holiday Inn. The holiday favorite is coming back with the Broadway director and choreographer, that's Gordon Greenberg and Dennis Jones. Uh, that's coming over the holidays, of course, November 21st through December 30th. Okay, now we're getting into some new stuff. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure you're ready. Um, <laughs> there's a world premiere musical called My Own British Invasion. Okay. Okay, this is based on Peter Noon, who was in Herman uh, Herman's Hermits. Am I saying that right? Herman's Hermits. There's a kind of hush huh. all over the world. Ennery the Eighth, I am, I am. You know that I'm talking about? No, probably not. Nope. Um, 
<laughs> no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's directed and choreographed by Jerry Mitchell. Well, I know him. Okay. And I know That's Rick a Alice. start. That's a start. If you're old like me, you know Herman's Hermits. Um, but it also features music that. by the Beatles. Perhaps you've heard of them. The Rolling Stones. And uh, so it looks really interesting. And book Beth, by Rick. there's two more new stars. Oh, Jesus. But you didn't mention Benny and June Benny yet, and June is coming. Which is a Johnny Depp movie you all saw. Although it's in like my least favorite Johnny Depp movie, i got to be honest. Really? Yeah. They made a musical of it. They did it at the Old Globe. And yes, that's And now it's coming correct. to Paper Mill. Uh, and this one is, it's uh, Jack Cummings, the third, is directing it. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Jack. Music by uh, Nolan Gasser and lyric by Mindy Dickstein, who wrote? Who wrote Little Women. I You're can't welcome. stop that. Mm -mm. If it's something that happened while we were working here together, she knows. <laughs> That's not true. And then all. we forgot to mention Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Coming yes. back and uh, directed by Mark Hobie, who's the artistic director. It's always director. coming back. Is it? It just is what it is. It's Beauty and the Beast. It's It will be here again. It's always How about there. that? <laughs> uh, NBC is doing, uh, we know they're doing the Jesus Christ Superstar live in concert, but they're also doing an Andrew Lloyd Webber birthday celebration that week. So everything today is totally Andalite Weber, not Millie. That was a couple That's weeks ago. Really uh, because his book comes out tomorrow. Yes. I read about a third. I started it in the bathtub. I started over the it in the middle. Oh, I don't you know. You just want to read the Imogen chapter? Yeah, I There's like Imogen. Imogen. I want to hear about her chapter. Uh, anyway, and then, of course, Jesus Christ Superstar is happening, and, right, it's, it's, right. and he's turning 70. 70 years old. And so NBC is doing Android Weber's tribute to a superstar. Android Weber tribute to a superstar. <laughs> um, March 28th at 10 p.m. Uh, and so he's going to be on it, and he's going to be talking to people. Like awesome. John Legend and uh, Glenn Close and Lin Manuel Miranda, that guy. He's a big fan of ALW. Uh, yeah, and the Young People's Chorus of New York City. So that's going to be nice. cool. It's that's all nice. Android Weber stuff. Big birthday celebration. And last but not least, Wayne Brady is joining Kinky Boots again tonight. Back in the boots. I just want to say that Wayne Brady is coming back. He's there through April 28th while Jay Harrison G is at Paper Mill. We're just going to talk about Paper Mill some more to do the sting. So Wayne Brady, back Back on, at the Hurt the Club boots, Theater. You said it. I already said, you already it. said, I already that said line. it. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, not, no. <laughs> Beth, get out of here. Rob Evans coming in. Uh, Matt, why don't you fill everyone in? Oh, I'd love Mr. to. Evans. During the span of Rob's impressive and varied career, he has performed in seven leading roles on New York stages, including the original Broadway cast of Jekyll and Hyde, playing the title role more than a thousand times over three years. Rob has also appeared on Broadway as Jean Valjean in Les Miserables, in Disney's Tarzan, Little Shop of Horrors, mm. and. Dance of the Vampires. Rob is a member of the multi-platinum selling band Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and he's open for and performed with Sir Elton John, Trisha Yearwood, Linda Etter, Phil Collins, R.E.M., Joe Walsh, Usher, Michael Crawford, and many others. Rob's been featured uh, as a soloist for more than 40 symphonies around the world, and his position as creative director at the Nederlander Worldwide Entertainment has enabled him to be one of the first Broadway performers to play Havana, Cuba in the last 50 years. He's here today to talk about the show that he co-created Rocktopia. And now, here's Paul and Rob. Hi, Rob. Thank you for coming in. Well, I sound important. Don't you I? are so important. <laughs> you are important. Oh it's from your website, you oh know? Oh, my I mean. gosh. I thought I took that down. <laughs> Anyone who was in Dancing the Vampires is important to me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I saw your interview with Max. Max von Essen. Oh, yeah. 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 My we, fave. we always talk about Dancing the Vampires. My fave. Uh, how are you? I'm good. That Dance of the Vampires was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second because <laughs> I can never let it go. Uh, but first, let's talk about Rocktopia. Yeah. This is your baby. It's a little bit my baby, Paul. It's a, it's a Broadway show. It starts, what, March 20th? It does, At yeah. the enormous Broadway theater. And we have only six weeks, six weeks only. You know, a lot of people say, you know, it's a limited engagement, but we actually are a limited engagement right. because there's another giant show coming in after us, so yes. we, we have to vacate. Yes. But this is, okay, so let's, let's go back to the beginning. Um, where did this idea come from? I know that you've been... You're an amazing singer. You're a rock and you can do rock and roll. You can do Broadway. You can do opera. You can do all these. Well, I, I things. think I can. <laughs> you can. You can. So, so it sounds like this is just sort of like the perfect vehicle for you and a really entertaining show. I mean, that was the idea. Was was that you know I was trying to, you know, feed my family in this crazy business of ours and yeah. and you know I, I studied opera early on in my life, but then it ended up, you know, auditioning for Les Mis and an open call in Nashville back in you know, 1990, right? and then uh, Richard J. Alexander hired me, put me on the ensemble, and then, you know, 15 years later after playing Valjean at 26, and then Jekyll at 29, and then being in Tarzan and Little Shop and Dance of the Vampires. You were one of the first young, young Valjeans. 
I think I was the youngest. Yeah, I feel like I think I, I could barely like grow a me. beard at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had a neck beard. Barely I had to, hit I had to comb it up. You know, literally, literally. <laughs> but you know, and that's that's a part two that I got to actually revisit. You know, later as they yeah. were doing other productions. So yeah. Broadway is is kind of is is where my my heart is, mm -hmm. and but then I kind of escaped and you know with working with Jim Stein and at Dance the Vampires yes. and then trying to create this kind of rock persona and then working with the Trans Siberian Orchestra for 16 years and yeah. playing in front of millions you know in you right. know 20,000 a night right you know in arenas and everything and I kind of was able to walk the line with this theatrical rock thing yep. and that's how this idea of Rocktopia kind of came about was literally just trying to create a concert that was could feed my family that was you know when you're a, a quote unquote Broadway star, you really can't sell tickets, you know, unless you're a movie star sometimes. Right. That's right. You know, the business that we're in. So I was trying to create an idea that was was bigger than I was as an mm -hmm. artist and that I could take classical and opera, which was my original love, yep. and then fuse it with classic rock. So that's what it is. It, it Like when you look at the list of the music you're doing, it's literally that. It's classical music and like, the, the rock and roll. It is completely. Yeah. It's it's like taking a Puccini aria mm -hmm. and mixing it with Led Zeppelin. And but what we found out, because I've been working on this project for eight years, is that there is a lot of commonality between those two worlds. And I think that we created this idea that if Beethoven or Mozart, especially Mozart, if he were alive today, he'd be a rock star. He lived right. like a rock star. Uh -huh. And they wrote giant hooks too, you know, Beethoven, ba da da da, right. you know, is a big hook, just like, don't stop believing. Yeah. It's a big hook. Yeah. And so we found these commonalities between that. And then, you know, through my work in the symphony world and realizing that a lot of the classical um, uh, symphony subscribers were, were not coming to the theater anymore. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of those artists were trained to do that we wanted to find a project that challenged the, the the symphonic players, but also was accessible to everybody else and could actually turn them a profit. So I, I created this with a, a an amazing uh, uh, um, arranger and maestro named Randall Fleischer, and we both had the same loves of classical music and, and classic rock. So, so how did you make it a show that's worthy of Broadway? Well, it's really a concert. It okay. really is. It's a theatrical concert, yeah. and I, I just want to make that clear. It's not a musical, right? Um, right. But it's epic because we use a, a, a you know a, a twenty five uh, strong symphony orchestra. We use forty people in a choir uh, in in Budapest, where we filmed this for PBS, which uh -huh. was kind of our our first foray into yeah. to sharing this with the world. We had one hundred fifty people on stage. Oh my god! But you can't do that on Broadway. I mean, it's it's you know being a creator and a producer, it's also learning, okay, I guess money's involved mm. and you have to figure all of that out right. and try to, you know, find a way for your concept to to work within the confines of of, you know, the, the finances. Uh -huh. And but it's always been a, a dream of mine to bring a project like this back home to Broadway mm -hmm. because that's a big full circle moment in my life. Yeah. And it's something that I you know I have to pinch myself sometimes to go. Right. Okay, we're at the Broadway Theater. That's where Lemus started, and that yeah. was my Broadway debut. And yeah, you know, so I, I think we're bringing something that, that when you said was worthy of Broadway, yeah. I think we're bringing this epic concert event. You know, because there have been other things other than musicals that mm -hmm. have played Broadway. Right. And right. I think because we're doing a limited run, we call this kind of our our Broadway residency, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, and we're a touring project, so this is just a great platform to show the world what we're doing and and you know reintroduce classical to music to to younger audiences uh -huh. and you know the music i believe of, of like freddie mercury and 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 you know uh, a foreigner and uh, right. uh pink floyd will resound beyond our lifetimes yeah you know they're it's great music and it's not know? just you up there there like you said there's a here's on uh chorus but there's also Amazing singers, yeah, yeah. I mean, guest stars. That that was the idea. Was was that you know, it's not a Rob Evan concert by any means. And and my goal is to take myself off the stage because I know there's so many more talented people than I am. But we've got some really diverse, amazing uh -huh. artists. You know, Tony Vincent from yes. Jesus Christ Superstar and yes. American yes. Idiot he, and fantastic. and The Voice. And he and I are are so different on stage, but uh -huh. we have this wonderful chemistry. Uh -huh. And uh, an amazing uh, 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 African American singer named. Kimberly Nicole from The Voice, mm -hmm. and uh, 
a, a, a beautiful soprano just straight from the Met. Her name is Allison Cambridge. So uh -huh. she's bringing that legit opera cool. to our world. And Chloe Lowry, who is to me the next Celine Dion. And uh, we've got Pat Monahan of Train yes. that's going to join us for three weeks. And, yeah. you know, I, I didn't want to do a gimmick. You know, I wanted uh -huh. to actually, and he totally bought into the concept, Paul. He was, he's such a really good singer yeah. and is known for also covering Led Zeppelin. Okay, and right. so we're going to kind of, you know, honor that in the show too. Uh -huh. And and then we're doing kind of a Rocktopia treatment on one of his songs. So cool. It's going to be fun. So you were in Jekyll and Hyde for a very long time. It was uh, a big part of my life. Yeah. That was like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, from, I guess from day one when uh, Bob Cuccioli uh, signed on as the lead, I was always the standby, right. you know, from 1994. And then when we brought it to Broadway and then uh, beyond, I took over for Bob. And, yeah. you know, I've done it a lot of places around the world. Yeah, so I know. Yeah. It's like, I guess know, that's where I've, we met maybe yep, years definitely, ago. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you were fantastic in that roles. <laughs> that roles. Um, yeah. And, and I do want to talk. So what, what are some of your other favorite things? Like, You've done a lot of these big shows. You did play Jean Valjean also many times, right? I think the most fun that I ever had on Broadway was playing the dentist. I replaced Doug Sills. In oh my God, yeah. shop. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> my wife, she, you know, living with me in Jekyll and Hyde was just not a not a great thing. No. <laughs> I brought it home every day, just uh -huh. that angst. And so, you know, when, and it's funny too, because I've died in every show I think I've played on Broadway. Valjean, I died. Wow. Jekyll, I died. Uh, I was sh I was fed to a plant as Orin. Wow. Okay. I uh, danced the vampires. I was burned by sunlight. Maybe you should make like an <laughs> Kerchak, amazing... I was shot. Maybe you need like an amazing death scene for <laughs> In Rocktopia. Rocktopia. That's what I was going to say. I, was like, I just hope, the show, I hope yeah. the show doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> uh Yes, Dance of the Vampires. We have to talk about this. So you sang, that means you sang uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart on Broadway. I did. It was funny. I was the Mandy standby Gonzalez. for with Mandy, our amazing yeah. Mandy. Yeah. Mandy and Max, they're just like family. Yeah, Von Essen. Yeah. yeah um, I was the standby to Michael Crawford and Renee Auberginois. Uh huh. Yeah. And that was an interesting thing after playing Jekyll and, and kind of going, okay, I'm done with that part of my life mm -hmm. of, of understudying or standbying. But, but, it, on paper, that just sounded perfect. Right. Right? Right. It just didn't work out that didn't way. Didn't work out. It didn't work out. <laughs> but that show was crazy. Not so much. <laughs> that show was nuts. It was nuts. I love that show. So I did nuts. too. I Beth, mean, and, I, Beth and I actually saw it in Paris like five years ago. We had to see it again. Well, and that's the thing too is that Tans de Vampire worked great. Yeah. It still it works playing. in... It just... We couldn't make German, it work. French? What was it in? <laughs> well, and then, but they but they did it in <laughs> Germany for years. I Thank think it's you. still running. They do it in every language. Way to go, Beth. Beth knows everything. <laughs> apparently, English. I wish more like summer stock theaters did it. Wouldn't that be fun, dude? Let's do a reunion. <laughs> let's do a reunion concert. That's yes. that's my life now. Is let's do a concert. Let's make it about the music. And let's not try to stage it because okay. that's where everything yeah, goes. Make there's, it there's about a, the there's music. There's a question yeah, the related to this, music. by the way. There's a question related to this. Oh, okay, Matt. Tell um, me. Gibson says. Since you guys are bringing up Dance of the Vampires fairly frequently, I feel a related question is appropriate. Is there any truth to the rumor that amongst, among Rob's many other ventures as a concert producer, he's working on a live tribute to the show, possibly involving a reunion of the original cast? Well, that's what he just kind of said. He wanted to. I mean, I, I want to do it. Yeah, if Great. there's yeah, I mean if Paul will produce it for me. <laughs> Can we do it in this room? <laughs> yes. I think right? that's probably a better we'll idea than live. most. We'll do it on live at five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Live at five. Yeah. Dance the vampires. <laughs> <laughs> do you like any like Broadway that's not rock and roll? You have such like a rock and roll kind of uh, reputation. I think it's just I kind of I mean like this isn't rock and roll, but you know what I mean. Like, but you, this is sort of your thing now. Right. Is there anything? I think you. I think you're. You hit it on the head. This is yeah. sort of my thing now. Yeah. You know, I've got two kids in college, so I've got to well, figure out what my thing is. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I Broadway is. is uh, I grew up singing Bob Goulet and Tony Bennett. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where I hope that I can maybe bring if, you know, if if my voice stays good to me, uh -huh. you know, I'll be 50 this year, wow. you know, and kind of cruise around. I would love to kind of take myself out of these other projects and go, okay, now I want to do, you know, some some big band stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And and but I also so bad wanted to be Curly in Oklahoma. 
you know, and Cameron <laughs> wouldn't see me for it. He saw me as a Judd, but that's right. okay, you right. know. Right. I'm a big guy. I was a football player in college, right. so, right. you know. Right. So it's just the whole idea of the boards and being back here is super special to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do the Jekyll and Hyde fans, do they, are they still around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, that's sort of oh, for yeah. life. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. They follow us. Thought. They followed Rocktopia to, to Budapest. They follow us around the country. Yeah, no, they're they're here. Yeah, wow. they're here. <laughs> so you've been touring the show. We did it. We did a, a, it? only a, just a, a spring tour that we delivered for PBS that was kind of okay. part of the agreement. Okay. Um, and we did twenty plus cities. Uh huh. Um, and it was interesting too because you know we can't always put one hundred fifty people on stage. Right. But right. what worked was if we just had 14 people in the orchestra yeah. and six backup singers, it still worked because right. the concept was yeah. was kind of touching people. Yeah. And it was like nostalgia because the music that you hear in the show is stuff that whether you know it was, you know, you might know it as the United Airlines theme, but we know it as Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, uh -huh. right. you know, right. and that's what right. we're trying to let the audience know. And then you might know Baba O'Reilly or you might know it as as – CSI theme song, you know, <laughs> from The Who. So right, right. that was kind of our idea was just to find this commonality, uh -huh. you know, within this this kind of epic project. So so how excited are you? March 20th, it's happening. It's the first day of rehearsal today. So it was like... Oh. Ying, ying. <laughs> so it's a little scary. Yeah. It's a lot scary. Yeah. Yeah. That's, but a, big, that's a big theater. It's a big theater. Yeah. But we're doing good. People are responding. Cool. Um, we're still the new kids on the block. You know, and we hope that we're not singing any new kids on the block. Let's be clear. Let's be very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Until yeah. that the boy band version of Rocktopia that you also produce, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> I love that you're throwing these projects my way. <laughs> but first, yacht rock. That's that's the first thing. Oh, what, what yeah. Matt and I have a yacht rock musical we're working on, which I guess we just told the world. All right, yacht good. Rock. Well, my money people are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rob, thank you so much for um, coming by. I Everyone, go to the excited. Broadway Theater. It's that really big one. It's not a Broadway Theater. It's the Broadway Theater. It's a big deal. It must have been excited when you got that house. It I was, mean, it must have been like, oh my we, God. We actually, we're very fortunate. We got a couple of offers from other theaters. And you had the, options. That was the one. Nice. It just felt right. Because of Lemus, something just fell. <laughs> see that? Luckily, not on us. Uh, <laughs> anybody they, see the Scottish play or something? They, <laughs> 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 thank you so much, Rob. Uh, everyone, thank you for watching. And Matt, why don't you take us out? I will do that. Thank you, everybody, for watching us live, if you're watching us live. And if you want another way to consume this show, which is live every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on our Facebook page, you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're listening right now and you haven't subscribed, you should, you should do that. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Tamira Gray from Once on This Island. We'll see you then, everybody. Bye.